Hey, we'll do another video, and this is going to be a little different. Um, and I may do a series on this topic. What I want to talk about today is the false prophets of science fiction. In the last several videos, I've uh, talked about false prophets within Christianity teaching a works-based salvation. In the past, I've done maybe a couple of videos on false religions that can also lead millions and millions of people in this world astray. But not to be outdone, and something that we don't think about uh, as Christians, is the false prophets outside Christianity and outside religion. Uh, and these are also men and women that the Bible is talking about when it says to beware of false prophets. So we're going to go over um, some of the more notable false prophets that we see that purport cosmic evolution and biologic evolution as fact, when in fact they walk by faith, not by sight, just as we do. And it takes a lot of faith to be an atheist. And a few are right here, either um, outright atheists or agnostic. But regardless, many not only don't put their faith in God, but they hate God. And they go out of their way to tell others that God doesn't exist and lead people astray. And, you know, it says right here, believe in a scientist just because he's a scientist isn't science. It's a religion and a religion without a moral compass at that. Um, and as you will see, as we go on this series these are very prideful men. They haven't humbled themselves to acknowledge the truth. Um, and professing themselves wise, they became fools. And I'm going to call them out because that's what they are. And the reason I'm doing it is because they hate God and they lead many, many people astray. These are people that teach science falsely so-called. Now, I'm a medical doctor, and I was a biology major, and I love science. I love um, the knowledge that we can gain from testing hypotheses, um, gathering data, and using different uh, methods uh, to test to see if those things are so um, and test them again and see if they're reproducible. And what you'll see with these men is they're not scientists. They are science fiction artists because they go to extremes of science where they get outside of what's testable. Um, and yet they purport it as fat. And not only that, they look down at anybody with another viewpoint as an idiot. Um, you know, anybody that would uh, believe the Bible, they scoff at. And it says in 1 Timothy 6, 20, 21, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. And so, uh, again, these are men that preach. And when I say preach, I mean preach. Science falsely so called. And they do this with the underlying means of 
leading people away from God. And the first guy is Bill Nye. And how could Bill Nye the science guy be a false prophet? What am I talking about? Um, he's on all the kids' shows and all the Disney shows. Um, he had a about a five-year run on Disney, I think, in the mid to late 90s uh, with Bill Nye the Science Guy. And that's where he gained all his notoriety. And that's um, what he has been riding um, on the coattails of for the last 15 years plus. Um, but this guy is nothing more than an actor. Um, he got his mechanical engineering degree at Cornell in 1977, and afterwards he began his professional acting and writing career. Uh, and he began it in Seattle on um, a local sketch comedy TV show in Seattle called Almost Live. And from that, they developed a skit called The Science Guy, where he did short skits uh, doing science experiments, sort of quirky, um, you know, comedy. And this caught on ultimately to get him um, the contract for Bill Nye the Science Guy. And he gets into, or has gotten into, um, the living rooms of millions and millions of Americans. Um, and he's gotten into the heads of many, many, many children that have watched him over the years on Disney uh, that think this guy knows everything, that he's so smart, and we should just listen to him because he is the science guy and he knows all. Um, so what is he teaching and what has he taught our children in the past? Well, you can see from this uh, quote of his, and I say to the grown-ups, if you want to deny evolution and live in your world, that's fine. But don't make your kids do it because we need them. So, you know, that's sort of a strange statement. You know, what, what do you need children for? Um, you know, if you don't believe in creationism and don't believe in the Bible and don't believe in God, that's one thing. Uh, but to come into people's living rooms and tell others how to raise their children, uh, especially uh, Christian families that trust the word of God, there is something a little uh, questionable about his motives. And you can see here, uh, he will make fun of creationism. Uh, I think this is, looks like Sarah Palin. I'm not sure. I just found this picture um, with Sarah Palin riding a dinosaur. But anyway, it says creationism because it's easier to read one book than a bunch of hard ones. So again, um, this is I like this slide because it shows... Uh, pridefulness and it shows um, you know how men can get puffed up in themselves uh, that they're so smart and uh, God isn't if he even exists at all according to them and you know why trust just one book instead of all the science books that we have um, and all, all these hard books that takes years and years of study to learn and be an expert in. And he'll go to debate uh, creationists. This is Ken Ham. He built the Noah's Ark uh, exhibit uh, in northern Kentucky, I think, opened last year. Um, and it's next to the Creation Museum. Uh, but they'll they'll battle and have debates and 
you know, um, we just read avoid vain babblings. Um, you know, I've, Ken Ham, you know, God bless you, but you're not getting anywhere debating this guy because you're never going to change his mind. Um, and I think it's just, you know, debates like that are, there's not a lot to be gained from it. I think we just need to stick to the Bible and, and uh, teach Christ crucified and preach the gospel. Uh, that's what's going to lead people to Christ. Um, I think there is a place for debate. Um, and I think there's some good um, things that can come out of it occasionally. But for the most part, uh, we need to be out preaching the gospel. Uh, if we wanted to preach on or teach creationism, I think we should do it. Um, you know, without debating uh, atheists uh, or people who believe in uh, evolution and just show the scientific facts of a young earth uh, and um, that evolution, whether from a biological standpoint or a cosmic standpoint, is completely absurd and uh, erroneous and, and false in every way. And part of this cut off, I'm gonna read read this says the earth is not six thousand or ten thousand years old. It's not. And if that conflicts with your beliefs, I strongly feel you should question your beliefs. So you know, these are brazen atheists that will belittle uh, somebody who believes in God, that believes that the Bible's true. Um, that believes the Genesis account, the creation account. But it's not only in Genesis that we see um, this account, but throughout the Bible. But he will scoff and make fun. And, um, you know, people that put their trust in Bill Nye, that he knows his science, and don't put their trust in the Bible, uh, will think that he's preaching the truth. But he's just an actor. He's just a writer. He didn't even study science. He studied mechanical engineering. And this says the science guy danger not to be taken seriously. Those sure of what they say don't need to censor other views. And that's what we see all the time. And you'll see him come on television uh, to discuss global warming, which everybody saw as a fraud with falsified data so now it's called climate change and so he goes on and argues climate change and wants to get all these rules and regulation and more money thrown at it your money um, and we have a mechanical engineer and a professional actor and writer that is going before Congress uh, trying to get your money But he wants to get a lot more than that. Uh, he wants to get evolution stamped in every science textbook for our kids. And that creationism is not even a thought. It says right here, creationism in the U.S. is an embarrassment and a shame. A religious superstition that does, that does real harm to children. Creationism is a symptom of a willful ignorance and an anti-intellectualism that thwarts scientific progress at home and humiliates the U.S. abroad. <laughs> so this is a guy that has gotten into the home of millions and millions of American families that children have watched that says that creation and crea creationism that believe in God and taking him at his word does real harm to them. So, you know, and, and not only does that, but um, at, at, the, at the best, people that believe this are ignorant, um, if just outright um, idiots. 
and that it thwarts scientific progress. Uh, but when, since when has believing in evolution helped science or cosmic evolution even? That hasn't done anything. That hasn't helped anybody um, except give jobs to paleontologists or NASA, which hasn't ever given us anything either, but a bunch of hocus pocus um, space launches that go up and come right back down in a parabolic curve. But he'll get you um, and your tax money and your children's thoughts and minds and put that seed and it's not the it's not the word of god it's not that seed that can lead to salvation and trust in jesus christ but it's a wicked seed because this is what it teaches it teaches that we came from apes and monkeys and evolution teaches that we came from non-living substance um, that this primordial suit that a lightning bolt struck and amino acid rearrangement and the perfect conditions ultimately created single cell organisms so this is just the end of this long process of millions and millions of years of evolution that is taught uh, and taught as fact in the science classrooms. And I had a lot of these classes, um, whether it was teaching this from a genetic standpoint, an embryonic standpoint, um, a geologic or fossil record standpoint and it's all nonsense um, there's never been any intermediate fossils ever found between the chimpanzee that you see to the left going to the upright homo sapien um, no man was made in God's image on the sixth day and he made beasts on the sixth day too and we aren't evolved from lower species. Humans are special and are made for God's plan and purpose. And he wants everybody to turn to him, to acknowledge the truth that's already written in everyone's heart, uh, and just trust in him and believe what he did for us. Uh, and that's... Ultimately, they gave his only begotten son to die for our sins. We see the fossil record as evolution by death and mutations. But we know from Romans 5.12 that before sin, there was no death. Death came by sin. Uh, and that was the sin in the uh, Garden of Eden. And since then... We've been on this course of death and, um, you know, genetic entropy, uh, really, uh, when you look at um, humans and how over generations we've developed more and more mutations and more and more diseases, um, we're devolving, not evolving, but... Um, they want you to believe in evolution. They want you to believe in this. And look at all these different skull shapes. Uh, there's no similarities to a lot of these. Um, that it goes from something small um, and more oblong with uh, a horizontal length longer than the vertical. Then all of a sudden it gets... Um, in the middle there where 
the ratios are completely reversed with a big huge jawbone and then it gets small again you know it, it's just made up and when they dig up a, a fossil all it shows is that something died it doesn't show that anything evolved there's never been any new genetic material that's ever been produced there's never been any kind of animal that has evolved to a different kind ever um, again they walk by faith not by sight but they want you to believe this and looking backwards they want you to believe this because this millions and millions and then if you look at cosmic evolution billions of years that ultimately everything we see today came in a big bang from nothing they substitute nothing in the place of God and that's what they want you to think they're atheists they hate God so they don't want him to exist and they don't want you to believe that he exists But they're ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They went down the wrong path. They didn't trust God's word. Instead of reading God's word, they wrote their own words. As you can see here, he's made millions of dollars on books. This one, Undeniable, Evolution, and the Science of Creation. He's writing his own creation story. He's already rejected the truth. And that's okay if we present him the gospel and he rejects it. But when he comes into our children's living rooms, and teaches this to them, I have a problem with it. But ultimately, our faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but the power of God. And Paul writes about this a lot in 1 Corinthians at the beginning in chapters 1, 2, and 3. Um, you know, so I'd encourage um, to read those three chapters and just meditate on God's wisdom uh, versus our imperfect wisdom uh, that will never come anywhere close um, to God's wisdom. I'm trying to get to another slide here. And again, shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase into more ungodliness. So we shouldn't listen to these guys. We should just turn them off, not buy their books, not listen to their television programs when they come on the news. It's just nonsense. It's babbling. It's vain babbling, and it's profane to God. And so I just want everybody to know in this first video who Bill Nye is. He's a fraud. He's an actor. And this says, after all my years of life, I have not yet seen that such a destructive and evil higher being is truly good. So basically, they've had the truth of God, as we know in Romans 1, but then they counted it as unrighteousness, that, it, that God's wisdom and knowledge um, they reject it, uh, even though 
it's been shown to them, and they know it, and they understand it, according to Romans 1. But they love darkness rather than light, and this is their view on God, and that's why they reject him. Again, 1 Corinthians 2, 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but the power of God. And when, you know, I used to read some of these science books. I thought I was smart and knowledgeable, but I was never coming to the truth either. Until finally I humbled myself and said, God, I don't care what you tell me. I just want to know the truth. And picked up his word, picked up the Bible, and trusted it, and started reading it. And that's when I started getting understanding and wisdom for the first time. When I quit trusting in books that fallible men wrote, and went to the, the true, the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And, you know, these people like Bill Nye, they're proud. They're scorners. And they'll never come to the knowledge of the truth or acknowledging the truth with a proud heart. It's been hardened. Hopefully it hadn't been hardened to the point of being reprobate. But after decades and decades of hating God and going into debate after the debate, trying to prove that he doesn't exist, you know, it may be, it may be that, you know, some of these people that we're going to talk about have crossed that spiritual line in the sand. We'll never know for sure. We never know anybody's heart. And I hope and pray that uh, people like this would would acknowledge the truth that would turn away from unbelief and turn to God and have faith towards God and Jesus Christ. You know, that would do wonders. Think of how many people he could lead to Christ if that happened, that had listened to all his falsehoods and that if he turned from that, repented from that, um, and went out and preached the gospel. That would be amazing. <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, right now, the proud look is something like this. And I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. Prove me wrong, Bill Nye. Because right now, this is an ugly sheep right here. But right now, Bill Nye is a false prophet, a false prophet of scientism, leading millions and millions of people away from God. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You can see here, Bill Nye may be an engineer, Steve Martin lookalike, sketch comedy, or children's television guy, but Bill Nye is not a real science guy, as we have seen. And he scoffs at creationism. And, you know, these may be some of the last of the last days. We don't know. Uh, we can only watch, just like Jesus said, but Second Peter 3, 3 and 4 says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. And when you put the creation at 14, 18, 19 billion years ago, wherever they put it, you know, whatever the flavor of the month is, then of course they're going to scoff at that. The earth's been here for 19, or the universe has been here for 19 billion years, and the earth for 
several billion years, you know, the slow cosmic evolutionary process um, without God. It's what they believe in. So why would, why would they believe that the earth was young and, you know, and that these were last days and that Jesus Christ could have a soon return? That's nonsense to them. That's foolishness. The word of God, the preaching of the cross is foolishness unto them. So finally, just in case we're not sure after this presentation, Bill Nye is not a scientist. He only pretended to be one on a children's television show. So that'll be the end of video number one, looking at the false prophets of scientism, who again, walk by faith, not by sight. We'll get to number two in an upcoming video. Thanks.